Yep. Looks good. Okay, then. Let's go for it. So, my name is Pau Garcia. I work for SUSE. I'm the product owner and project manager of SUSE Manager, which in a way makes me the benevolent dictator of Uyuni. Because uh, Uyuni is the upstream for SUSE Manager. Okay. So you can find me in Gitter, in Freenode, by email. And the, the, I want to first start by introducing what is Uyuni, in case some of you may not know it. So Uyuni is a systems management solution. So when you have a ton of, when you have tens of or hundreds of thousands of, of servers, of Linux machines you want to manage, then you may find that uh, manual management or even some scripts that you design yourself are not exactly the, the easiest way. So things start to scale, especially if you start mixing different Linuxes. So we can manage with Uni every kind of workload from a single console or API or command line tool. Uh, we have automated audit and reporting capabilities that are always useful in the enterprise world. Uh, it does software and hardware inventory, which is critical for compliance or even to just know what you have at your company. And we can also do configuration management. You can deploy files, for instance, you know, uh, antivirus definitions or configuration files so that the, all your uh, servers are um, using exactly the same configuration, at least for some things. You can also do virtualization. You can do containers. Uyuni is a, is a huge beast. Now, this is the architecture of Uyuni. It's a classical client server application. There's an element in the middle called the proxy, which is optional. As you can see, you, you may have it or not have it. The proxy is just a, a mean to offloading the, the Doubling the doubling packages and files. That, that's essentially it. But all the, the, the smart management is here in the server. Okay. And we didn't start to uni ourselves, right? So at SUSE, I mean, it, 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 it's originally an open source project by Red Hat called Spacewalk, which is rather old, more than a decade ago. It was the base for Red Hat Satellite 5, the current version of Red Hat Satellite 6. It's based on something completely different, and also for SUSE 3.2. In 2018, uh, we realized that Red Hat was not really interested in Facebook anymore. They were not allowing the community to take over, so we forked it. And by the way, Spacewalk, the upstream uh, Spacewalk project is, is dead since a few months ago. And uh, Red Hat acknowledged that Uyuni is the proper successor to Spacewalk. So why Uyuni? Because Uyuni is the, the, world, the world's largest salt flat. Um, originally, Spacewalk had its own um, client management stack, which is what we call the, the traditional stack. But we added, as soon as we added salt, uh, that company that VMware acquired recently. Uh, so we use uh, salt, the open source version, and add a lot to it and provide a nice UI automation and a lot of other things, right? Although other features that Sol doesn't have by itself. Um, so yeah, you, you can see the, the, the game with the, with the words. There's Salt Uni, large Salt flat. Yeah. Um, so you can migrate from Spacewalk to Uyuni. It just works. Or yeah, you can use the Salt Minion, which is our preferred option because all the new development goes into salt minions. Some bracing systems are not even supported as traditional clients. So we focused well, we, with Uni and SUSE Manager, by the way, we focused on having a simple installation and adding advanced features such as containers and Kubernetes integration, scalability, you can scale to tens of thousands of, of clients with a single server. Um, we wanted to, to modernize also the, the UI and the, the tools. 
the, the even we migrated from Python 2 and the older versions of Java. You can see that we continued a uh, space walk and made it better because we still believe that it was the, the right solution and the right architecture. It has been, Uni has been the upstream for SUSMIS since version 4.0 uh, two years ago. Now, oops, um, there's a, yeah, there's a slide missing here, a, a sub page, which is uh, translating is a way of contributing to Uni. So when people think of uh, contributing to an open source project, they usually think of coding, but that's not the only way of, of contributing. Um, uh, uh, Translating to your own language is, is a good way. So for, uh, in the past, the spacewalk allowed or had translations. They become updated uh, a few years ago, I will say. So we never shipped them with the uni or through the manager. Now we decided that we want to reintroduce translations. And of course, English is the, the language that uni is developed in. So when in doubt, always refer to the English version of Uni and the English documentation. But we have a, a, a very good <laughs> Japanese uh, translation. It's completely uh, done for the software, so for the web UI and for the command line tools. The documentation is not yet translated, but um, there's this, this guy who has been working very hard for the past two months on his own, and yeah, I'm really grateful to him. There are other languages where we have active translators, Slovak, Czech, Brazilian, Portuguese, and Spanish. They still have a long way to go. And then there are a lot, a ton of, of obsolete translations and very incomplete languages like French, German, Russian, Arab, Esperanto. I don't know, there's, there's like 30 translations which are in need of love. I saw someone saying that he will like he will be interested or she will be interested in the in translating to Swedish, please. So how to start translating uni? So when we um, decided to to re-enable translations, we had to decide what to do, how to do this, and uh, OpenSUSE was offering WebLate, and while it was not so easy for the documentation, and I will talk about that later. We got there. So the easiest way is just go to this URL, which is uh, OpenSUSE's WebLate, and start translating. It's really easy. You will find that it's a massive thing. So there's uh, currently there's 110,000 words to translate if you want to translate Uni fully, the web UI, the command line tools. The, and the documentation, and I'm not even including the API documentation there because that's not translatable so far. And I don't think it will ever be because it's a massive book and it will be used by very few people. But so it's it's a, a challenge, 110,000 words to translate. There's a ton of components as you can see here. And I'm going to explain a bit what these are. There's, by the way, a wiki page, which I, I, I have included a link to it, explaining everything I'm going to explain in full detail, OK? So in case you have any doubt, you can refer to this wiki page or just ask us in our Gitter uh, channels or mailing list. There's also links to that at the end of the presentation. Now, we can group all the around 20 or, or more than 20 components that we have in WebLate in three groups, essentially. There's the web UI, there's the command line tools, and there's the documentation. Okay. So web UI. Web UI, it's uh, internally, it uses an XML format called XLIF. That's irrelevant to you because what you see in WebLate is strings to translate. Okay. There's several WebLate components. There's Java, uh, JSP, there's the Java database. There's, uh, you will see something called web. All of those are the web UI. Now, translating is very easy. You just go to Uplate, click on select a language, select a component, and then, bam, start translating strings. There's a translation memory, and there's, yeah, really easy. It's just, it's massive, because it's it's around 
forty thousand yeah forty thousand words or even even slightly more testing this is not so easy now if you want to see the outcome of your own translation and you want to to uh, test it immediately you need to essentially set up a development environment and rebuild the rpm packages in obs so my advice will be just use unimaster so we sync we synchronize the the strings from weblet to the uni repository and regenerate the the rpm packages daily or almost daily for the synchronization so that the synchronization from weblet to the the git repository for the ui is is for the web ui is not yet fully automated we're working on it on, on that but yeah it will still take a few weeks i think to have it automated if you want to check something just ping us on, on gitter or the mailing list and we will make it happen okay that's for the web ui which is one of the most interesting parts i would say i would recommend the starting with the web ui because it's something that um it's, it's where people really expect to see translations working then there's the command line tools so uni has a few command line tools um, they are not so often used but there's a couple of them that are very useful for instance there's the space wall common channels which is the tool that you need to use in uni to add products to to mirror the linux distribution so uni supports essentially every enterprise linux distribution out there we support uh, Susan Linux Enterprise, we support Rehab, Enterprise Linux, we support Oracle Linux, CentOS, Ubuntu, Debian, um, uh, yeah, something called uh, Susan Linux Enterprise Expanded Support, and there's even reports of people making managing Fedora and it, uh, AWS, Amazon Linux with this, Amazon Linux too. So, yeah, you can see that um, you need to initially add those products. And uh, space well common channels is the tool you need to to use to that. So that's a good tool to translate. It's in the backend component. There's another tool called called Space CMD. Space CMD allows you to do everything you can do from the web UI, but from the command line. Okay. So uh, for instance, if you are a, you have a if you are visually impaired and you would prefer to use or oh, yeah you or you need a hearing aid and you would rather use a command line tool and and uh, some uh reader reader or something like that then um yeah space cnd becomes important tool okay there's uh, a lot less strings to translate in the command line tools it's um all put together all combined around ten thousand words there's several uh web -laid components again space cnd the back end um yeah it's like three or four components Translating is again very easy. The fact that this is using get text internally is irrelevant to you because you just go to WebLate, click on a component, and start translating. That's it. The translation memory works beautifully for this because there are short strings and they are, and you will see that when you start translating something magically, some a little percentage increment in some other component. That's because WebLate is reusing your translation for in one place to another place where it found exactly the same string. Now, again, testing is not so easy because you need to set up a development environment, rebuild the RPM packages. But again, yeah, you can use Unimaster, set up a VM with Unimaster, and, and daily you will get the, the new translation. The alternative in this case is rather easy. You can, uh, since it's get text, you, you can um, clone the Git repository for uni and compile the PO files to the binary get text files with message format, the, this uh, tool which is included in the get text package, and that's it. it. And just replace the file on disk if you are really desperate and you want to test it in real time and don't want to rebuild the packages. Again, these uh, strings are not uh, synchronized in real time but it takes maybe one day two days because we do this manually so far it's some part of it is automated the other part the merging into the the master branch is not automated due to a limitation in github so that that's uh, the the two let's say the software what we call the software strings the web ui and the command line tools but what about the documentation 
this is where it got hairy, I have to say. Our documentation is written in ASCII doc, and ASCII doc is a format that no translation tool supports, unfortunately. We also use the Antora build system, but that's yeah, uh, not so important. So we, there are some yeah some details about it that required some work initially, but most of the work went into ASCII doc. So what are we doing with ASCII doc? We are converting ASCII doc to get text using a tool called PO4A. So it's uh, PO4 uh, all, and then submitting that to WebLate to translate. Okay, we, we never keep the, the translations, the ASCII doc for the translations in the git repository. We don't need to do that because that's generated content. Uh, I, I mentioned that because that's a question that comes very often. Translating is very easy. Testing is very easy. And in case you have some difficulties setting up our documentation tool chain, we have prepared a VM and a container. The container is not yet in under uni project, but it, it should be in the coming days. So if you go to the wiki page that I, I mentioned earlier, and I will link uh, after at the end of the presentation, uh, it, you will find the information on how to download this. It's of course, everything is under github.com slash uni project. Okay, so either the VM, the VM even includes a clone of the Git repository, a browser, so that you just need to uh, spawn the PM and start translating immediately. And then you can test it yourself. Oops, in, in the case of the of the, uh, the documentation, the translation memory does not really work that well because uh, in order for it to work, you will need to match the full paragraph, which is not really something that you find too often. Um, so the translation memory really the only case where it um, reuses strings is essentially on lists. That's something that we are trying to work with the upstream PO4A project, but it's not going to be too easy. The, the good thing is that translation are committed immediately. So this is synchronized even almost in real time. And you can even click on, on commit yourself or ask us in the in, in Gitter and we will uh, commit immediately. So the translation comes very, very fast, much faster than the software string. And that essentially it. So next thing will be just, yeah, you can contribute to our community, to uni community. We are part associated in a way with OpenSUSE. Um, many of us are SUSE employees also, by the way. So we have the mailing lists. We have set up a mailing list for translators, by the way, it was created, I think today, it's uni translation at OpenSUSE.org. We have a Gitter chat where you can find a lot of people from the community and you have the, the GitHub repositories. If you want to continue with code, you will find here some instructions, or if you want to set up your development environment to test in real time your translation. And if you want to continue with, with translations, this is the web laid link. This is the, the wiki page where everything is explained, component per component with the, even the, the markup is explained here in, in the cases where, where some markup is used, like in the documentation, and here's the link to the VM with the uni docs tool chain with ASCII doc, ASCII doctor, and, um, and Tora, everything's here with all the Ruby gems that we need so that it's easy peasy. By the way, we are also participating in Hacktoberfest. So if you want to translate to into language, you can get a t-shirt for free. Just translate 1,000 words or strings and claim it. You will find more information about Hacktoberfest here. It's an initiative. It's not by SUSE or by SUSE. It's by DigitalOcean. It's very famous. This year, there have been some yeah, slight problems with it, but DigitalOcean has quickly fixed them. So you can get your T-shirt by translating. No need for coding, which is if you look at the most of the factor first uh, challenges or uh, um, problems, most of them are related to code. 
no. We also accept translations. I can do a little demo, or I think we have still a few minutes for more questions. Questions so far? None? OK, then. I'm going to do the demo. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, let me uh, stop sharing that thing. No. Oops. Ah, by the way, my camera was not on. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to yes, select the window. Um, what's this here? Can you see my screen now, Uyuni? Yes. Web late. OK, then. So here is, uh, as I said, these are all the components. You will see that all the docs components have docs before it. I would recommend, as I said earlier, always start with the server strings and refer to the documentation when you have, you're you in doubt about something. But the documentation changes very often. We, uh, we are improving it like every day. And there's uh, almost 800 pages of documentation. So if you uh, start with the documentation, you may find that uh, your translation becomes outdated uh, quite soon, let's say, especially after uh, in the second half of the year. It's like crazy. OK. So let's say I want to translate um, this just module. No, this one I translated already to Spanish. Let's say I want to translate something in the back end. I will go to the back end, try to find the language that you see as Albanian, Arabic, Zanese. Check 100%. Thank you. Japanese, 100%. Spanish, yeah, half done. So we just click here. It says there's 384 strings to go almost 3,000 words, I will go for it, translate. And yeah, this 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 means that uh, this string was uh, marked for uh, review, so it needs editing. And I can tell you that this string really needed editing because it was wrong. Your system was not found in the product name. This is a placeholder that we use, database, yeah, and you can see that this string, this translation came from Spacewalk because it said RHN. Now I have fixed it, save, and that's it. And then the next one is here. Yeah, this one is good. OK, this one, uh, OK, this one is, uh, this one needs fixing, actually. In the in the original language in English, I'm going to try to find something which is not translated yet because this is boring. I'm going to just jump to 150. Let's see if this is not okay. So the important thing is you always need to uh, yeah these placeholders, the spaces. Make sure that you don't change them because otherwise it might it might look. Uh, but on the screen. So what I, in case the, when this markup, what they usually do is I click on copy here. It copies the string with all the markup and everything, and then I replace your error. So uh, this part under server mount point do not exist. OK. Uh, and that's it. Done. See? This is super easy. It's something that you have 10 minutes, you want to translate five strings. Done. Super, super easy. Command line. Yeah. Oops. Forgot. Hello, Paul. Yeah. May I ask you a question? Of course. Uh, are you planning to integrate uh, in the Release plan uh, something like a 
spring freeze uh, or a period where uh, the translators can uh, translate, uh, being sure that the strings uh, will be that one uh, without changes uh, and so on. Mm, that's a good question. That's a very good question. So, so far, the, the, the freeze that the code freeze that we have for uni is very, very short. Um, and we will, so <laughs> the answer will be so far, we have not had this problem, but yes, that's a, a very good point. And we need for SUSE manager, we have a solution for that because we have a slightly longer freeze period, but definitely for uni, we need to, to find the a freeze date and a word translators the, the pro, we have not even thought of this yet because all the translations say for japanese are so incomplete that it doesn't make sense to ship any translation at this point right but yeah that's definitely a good point that we should freeze at least i guess a few days how much time will you suggest one week more than one week software becomes Old. Uh, we yeah, release I mean, it every month. <laughs> we release it every month. So more than one week. And how, yeah. Yeah. In general, depends how big is the uh, translation team. If you have a uh, one person, uh, will be a full time job. Mm. <laughs> so no, really it really depends. It, it, yeah, it doesn't change too often. So the software thing that do not change that often. And then for the for the documentation, e even if the translation is a bit outdated. It's not that bad because um, we are going to include uh, this disclaimer saying the authoritative uh, translation of the documentation is, or the authoritative language of the documentation is English. The translations might be a bit outdated. The, 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 the bad thing is with the software strings because if, if you are uh, seeing or using Uni in Italian and then you suddenly find the string in English, you will think, mm, <laughs> I don't like this. Right. Um, I, I go. I, I agree. I mean, the new language uh, should be made available only if you have uh, the the full translation. Mm. Something uh, yeah. incomplete. It's uh, definitely not professional. <laughs> yes. So the thing is, the software strings do not really change a lot these days. So it's when we add new features or improve some things in the second half of the year. Uh, it's usually very small features that. I do not come with a lot of associated strings or even with no strings at all because it's uh, improvements in the back end. Now, in the first half of the year, which is where we, uh, where Susan mostly contributes to Uni with new features, with say neatly new features, features that's where uh, new software strings may appear very quickly, like every every few or every week even. That means that for in the first half of the year, we will definitely need to agree on a on a software string and a translation grace. Yes, that's a very good point, and we will make a note of that. Thank you. More questions. Uh, yeah, one more. <laughs> For the translation theme, uh, do you have uh, something uh, um, in the documentation that you were showing, uh, uh, pointing out uh, which are the contacts of, of the translators uh, already active uh, uh, for the different languages? Sorry, come again? If there are any active, what? Uh, if you have uh, a, in the wiki, if you have uh, a, a list uh, or, or a contact, something uh, uh, of the different uh, translation team, just for having uh, a reference uh, for someone new no. joining uh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. to, I, to I, know. Yes, no, there's no no translation teams so far. We have this mailing list that uh, will was, has been created today, I think. We need translation mailing list uh wrote it in the chat but no if you want to find about a language who translated the easiest way is you go to the language let's see uh for instance 
I don't think we have anyone translating to Italian so far. Let's see. Uh, I was checking because uh, there are translations, so I don't know if uh, are yeah. old from. Uh, yes, the, they, they, those are probably old. Yes, yes. Yeah, you can see it. So Michael Carman and Pascal are uh, two of the guys who worked on enabling this. Oh, there's this Fito. OK. Uh, yeah, it's a known one. <laughs> yeah. It's also on the uh, LibreOffice side. Yeah, he also translates to Spanish. Yeah. Huh. OK. Yeah, so now we don't have this, but that's also a good idea to uh, add this to the wiki. Yeah, very good suggestions. You and me need to talk more. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> okay. I think I'm now out of time already. This was only. Uh, don't don't worry, I, I'm, yeah. the <laughs> I'm the next. I'm the next. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. Just a small word you can extract. Reports or translations on WebLate if you want to update your wiki with translators. There is a, a part where you can uh, extract reports on translations, translators, number of screens, and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know where to find it, but with this, is. In this report, in insights, okay. I, I will. I will find this and uh, let me check on, on our the uh, team. We have this info page where you can find the <laughs> wiki page. Also, by the way, I put this on the on the chat. Uh, just adapt it yeah. to your web plate. Yeah, uh, let me. I will. Is slash. Uh -huh. okay. Reports, and then you can have several reports. Okay, that. I will. I will take a look at, the, at this. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, any more questions, comments, suggestions? If not, thank you very much, and I will leave the scene to Marina. Thanks to you. Okay.